what is going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys how to create this tunnel transition inside of after effects now before i get started you will need one of these tunnel overlays and i'll have the link down in the description below where you can go ahead and purchase either all of these so you'll get all these different variations of colors and uh, different movements but if you want to go ahead and just download just the free sample which will include just this tunnel black right here which works perfectly fine but if you want to go ahead and have these other options to i guess use in your videos or you think would fit in your scene but once you have that downloaded you should be good to go so i have two different clips laid down in my timeline i have this one shot of the camera kind of pushing into this wheel and then the second clip is kind of doing a pan around the wheel so both of these shots are going to be perfect for this transition so so ideally you'd want to have something similar to this and also you can totally use this pack for something totally different besides from like cars like i guess you can transition through eyes or any kind of circular object that would make sense and honestly just helps to add more of like a 3d style to your videos so to get started we just want to go ahead and create a mask around one of our wheels so going into this rectangle tool and then left clicking it and holding it you'll bring up the ellipse tool here so just select that and then hold down shift on your keyboard and drag over your wheel and then let's go into the mask here and bring this to none. And then I'm just going to select my arrow here so I can kind of align the mask with the edge of this rim here. So now that I have the mask around the rim, I can go ahead and right click the mask and hit track mask. And then over here in the tracker, we're just going to analyze forward. And it looks like the tracker did a pretty good job, so I don't really have to adjust anything. But obviously, if yours kind of messed up or didn't track perfectly, then you would have to kind of go back in here and manually set the keyframes but I guess I'm pretty lucky for this one so what I want to do is go ahead and do the same thing for the next um, clip here so we can go into the mask once again and just hold down shift to create like a perfect circle and then once you have your mask set for that second clip we can go ahead and do the same thing and track this mask as well now that we have both of those tracks we can go ahead and select both of our layers and hit Control d twice and that's just going to duplicate our layers two times so we'll have three different layers for both of those clips. Now selecting both of the bottom layers on both of those clips, we're gonna hit M on our keyboard to bring up the mask. And we're gonna go into the mask type and bring it to subtract for both of these different layers, as well as we're gonna do that to the top. So selecting both of them and then hitting M, we'll bring up the mask properties for those. And we're gonna bring that to subtract as well. Now on the middle layer for both clips, let's go ahead and hit M once again. And we're gonna bring this to add. And then on this other layer, we're gonna bring that to add as well. So now you should have something where it's subtract, add, and then subtract for your different masked layers. So now when you move the wheel, you can see you have this like black circle, which is pretty much just the keyed out area. So that's pretty much what we want to be able to transition through the wheel here. We can now go ahead and drag in our tunnel overlay. And I'm just going to drag this overlay onto the bottom of all of our layers. And we'll be adjusting that in just a second. But first, we have to go ahead and animate the wheels. So to do that, we're going to hit P on our keyboard on that middle layer, and that's going to open up the position values. We're going to set a keyframe around the start, and then towards the middle, we're just going to bring this Y value down until you don't really see that wheel anymore or the rims. And then you can go ahead and select these keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease them. And then inside of the graph editor here, you just want to bring these points kind of close together. And as well, you want to make sure you're on the speed graph or just have the auto select graph type. And you can do that by just right clicking onto the graph. And now you can see you have a smooth animation of those rims kind of just disappearing from the car. Now let's go ahead and do that same thing for the second layer. So hitting P to open up the position, sending a keyframe at the end instead of the start, and then going towards the middle and bringing that down so you don't see the rim once again. And then doing the same thing, hitting F9 to easy ease them, and then bring these points together to create a smooth speed ramp and we can go ahead and adjust these keyframes later these don't have to be perfectly i guess like placed in your footage so yeah you can move those around if you need to later on now let's go up to the layer new and create a new camera and i'm just going to use this 35 millimeter preset and hit ok and then let's go back up to the layer and create a null object let's make all of our new layers 3d then you want to go ahead and parent this camera to the null object by using this pick whip tool now when you hit p on your null object you'll have these three different values and when you change them it'll move your camera around now if you're doing this and you're not seeing anything it might be because you don't have your camera selected to active camera so yeah just make sure you have active camera enabled so i'm going to set a keyframe on this null object for the position and then go towards the end or kind of towards the middle where that wheel disappears. And we're going to zoom into this wheel by using the Z value and then moving these other position values just so we can fit through this wheel and kind of get a perfect cutout of our background. And obviously we're going to have to scale this background down, but or our overlay, I mean. But there we go. Now it's animated through the wheel. So let's just go ahead and hit S on that overlay and scale this down. And then what you can do is just move this layer 
so it fits in that composition. And your overlay doesn't really matter where it's placed right now because we're honestly gonna have to adjust this later on once we get our animations done. So now starting at the first frame of our next clip, we're gonna go ahead and set a keyframe on the position for our null object and then go towards pretty much where we have that animation happening for the wheel and zoom this clip out so it reveals our um, second shot. And just like that, we pretty much already have our transition. But obviously there's a few things we have to fix and just make it look a lot cleaner because obviously we're not gonna want this in our video. So first we're gonna go ahead and smooth out this animation. So selecting these keyframes, we're gonna select them and hit F9 and that's just gonna go ahead and easy ease them. And we can select those and go into the graph editor and then just create pretty much what we did for the wheel by bringing these points together, as well as doing that same thing for this last zoom out animation. And you're gonna have to play around with them a bit just to get the right animation. And I think it actually zooms out, revealing our second clip a bit too early. So what I'm gonna do is select these keyframes and just bring them over a bit, maybe even shorten them down, something like this. I think that looks good for now. Now to fix this overlay from looking like it's just a rectangle, what we're gonna do is open up the scale so hitting S will bring up that scale. And then you just wanna to go to where you actually see the full overlay and there's no like black borders or anything. And you just wanna set a keyframe on that and then go to the start of your keyframe on that null object, or I guess your camera animation. You just wanna scale this up so you can kind of see this rectangle fills the whole entire wheel there. And as you can see, that pretty much gets rid of almost all of those like black edges. As you can see, there's still a bit there, so to fix that, we can go ahead and apply motion tile. So searching up motion tile and bringing that onto that overlay. Let's change the width and the height to 200 and just hit mirror edges. And that just cleans up those edges right there. And then go ahead and do that same thing for the end zoom out. So what we're gonna do is set a keyframe on our overlay for the scale, right where that animation starts to zoom out. And then go all the way to that end keyframe and scale this overlay up so it fits over that wheel like this. So it's looking pretty good now, but what I wanna do is fix this overlay so I can actually see it start to zoom out and turn around. Right now it's getting kind of cut off um, because of the animation. So I'm just gonna drag this overlay over to the left a bit. And I'm just gonna have to bring these keyframes back over to align with my other ones. And you can also go ahead and trim down your camera and null objects so they're not filling up your whole entire timeline. And then let's go ahead and apply motion blur onto all these layers. So just dragging and selecting these will enable motion blur. You just wanna make sure it's toggled on for your timeline as well. And that's just gonna help smooth out those animations. Then let's go ahead and select all of our layers and hit pre-compose. So now it's just in one layer. What I'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer by hitting Control Alt Y. And I'm gonna actually apply some shake. Now you can apply your own shakes that you already have like Sapphire or whatever shakes you prefer to use. Um, but I'm just gonna be using my presets that I have for my different shake overlays. So I'm gonna set this adjustment layer to where it zooms in. So right about here, looks pretty good. And I'm gonna enable motion blur for this adjustment layer. So if you have my shakes downloaded, you can just go into the animation presets and then go into the shake presets. And there's all of these different ones you can use. And if you don't have these, you can go ahead and download them in the description as well. There's a lot of different varieties of shakes and they're all super easy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the shake Y small preset onto my adjustment layer. Now when I play this back, you have that subtle shake effect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this adjustment layer one more time. And I'm just gonna delete these shake presets right here and then set this so it starts right where the zoom out happens. Or I guess when that wheel kind of appears back onto the screen, right around here. And I'm gonna apply shake Y and rotate. Now let's go ahead and play that back with our shakes added. As you can see, that actually makes a huge difference with kind of just helping everything flow together. And I just like that style of the impact it gives, but obviously that's up to you if you wanna have that shake or not. Now there's a lot of different ways you can use this overlay, like this one right here, where I zoom through the wheel and then it reveals this next clip. And if you wanna see like a part two to this tutorial, then I can do another video explaining on how I created this transition here. If you guys wanna see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.